so that we can then do a progressive tax system calculation, applying multiple tax rates to your estimated income, so that we can then have an average tax rate that we're gonna apply to your tax during the year. That's actually quite complex. And a small business doesn't really know all that, uh, especially if they're new. So they often stumble at that starting point and they often also forget about the fact that they not only have federal income taxes, but the self-employment taxes that they have to budget for and they have to pay and they have to do it as, uh, as the year goes. Okay, so an employee usually has income uh, tax withheld from their pay. If you do not pay your tax through withholding or do not pay enough tax that way, you might have to pay estimated taxes. So in other words, you might have a W-2 job, in which case the employer is taking money out of your wages based on what you told them on the W-4, but they are basically doing that. Now, you could then have a side job like gig work, for example, and you might have a Schedule C as well as W-2 employee work. If that happens, then the withholdings that you figured on the W-2 probably are not sufficient to now cover the added income in the event that you have income on your side job, your side business. And therefore you could increase the withholdings that are taken out of your wages so that it will now cover your other income or possibly you just removed yourself from employment altogether. You're like, I'm sick of having bosses and whatnot. I'm doing my own thing. And then if you do that, then of course you don't have anybody to do the withholdings at all and therefore you're going to be forced to make estimated tax payments. So that's going to be the general. Now, how are you going to do that? You're going to have to do some kind of projection, which means you could use tax software if you have an availability of tax software and you have to do some bookkeeping to try to project how much you're going to earn. And the IRS also has a tax calculator for, for withholding calculator, which is getting more sophisticated and is closer to basically tax software which is another great tool that you could uh, use to try to figure out and pay your estimated taxes so you don't get hit with the sticks. That's the point. That's what we're trying to do with taxes. The sticks in metaphorical terms are interest and penalties that we're trying to avoid. So estimated tax payments. You generally have to make estimated tax payments if you expect to owe taxes, including self-employment tax, Social Security and Medicare, uh, discuss later of $1,000 or more when you file your return. What happens if I don't, you might ask. What if I don't do that? Well, they hit you with the sticks, metaphorically, the interest and penalties. We're trying to avoid the sticks. So use Form 1040ES to figure and pay the tax. If you do not have to make estimated tax payments, you can pay any tax due when you file your return. For more information on estimated tax, you can see publication 505. So what are my options for paying estimated taxes? You can pay your estimated tax electronically using various options. Now you might think, well, that's quite nice of you, IRS. You made it kind of easy for me to pay the taxes, but it actually is quite nice of them because before these electronic payment transactions and whatnot, it was actually difficult to pay them, which was kind of a pain because now you're saying, the IRS is saying, you have to pay me by this time, but I'm gonna make it difficult to pay. And then if you don't pay by that time, they're gonna hit you with penalties and interest, right? So at least, at least they make it easy to pay uh, for the most part. But if you file electronically or pay them electronically, you need to make sure that you're applying it to the proper year. So for 2023, if you're making, you might be making tax payments in 2024 that should be applied to 2023. What if you apply it to the wrong year? Well, then the IRS is probably still going to hit you with a penalty because it's applied to the wrong year, right? Or in some cases, if you applied it to 2023 instead of 2024, they might refund the money to you, right? And then charge you charge you taxes because you didn't you you didn't pay for 2024. So we want to be careful and make sure that we have the the estimated tax payments properly calculated to the best of our ability and when made applied to the proper period. So if you pay electronically, there is no need uh, to mail in Form 1040 ES payment vouchers. This is of course what the IRS is trying to do more and more these days to make people pay electronically. Uh, which is nice and easy to do because you can verify the transaction 
Uh, if, if you want them to lag longer, you can send it to them by mail with the good old 1040ES. It might take them longer to process it, you know, the, <laughs> and so on, but whatever.